Rudolph triangle strategy. Is he good? Let's find out. Okay, so Rudolph is a unit you get depending on a certain path you take in the game. I'm not going to really go over recruitment in this video. In these videos, I'm assuming that you just googled how to recruit certain units and either followed the path or recruited them, or you're just like on New Game Plus and just like grabbing a bunch of units. So let's go over his stats and then his abilities and then his upgrades and then like where he fits in to a team comp. Okay, so Rudolph is what I would describe as a damage shutdown. So he does decent damage, uh, most of it's single target, uh, but he also has some shutdown slash crowd control. Uh, so, all right, we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's look at his stats. Okay, so strength is decent. So he is an archer. So archers generally have like 50-ish strength, so that's fine. Like 54 strength is pretty good. Uh, 49 physical defense, 44 magic defense. So kind of like medium-ish defense, maybe like his magic defense is a little more towards like medium low. Like it's not exactly low, it's not exactly medium. Uh, magic attack 39. This isn't really super relevant for his kit because he's not going to be using magical things. I mean, you can have him throw like a firestone or something and then I'll use his magic attack for that, but he's just going to be shooting. You like there's no reason to throw a firestone. He can just shoot things with his bow. So so that's uh redundant. Um or irrelevant, rather. Uh, all right, so 25 luck. So luck is your crit rate when not shooting the back. So 25 luck is actually on the lower end, so he won't be getting too many random crits. He'll still be getting a few, but not very many. Uh, 58 accuracy, so this is with an accuracy bracelet, which is plus 5, so he would really have 53 accuracy. Um, that's okay. It's not the. It's not horrible. It's It's like medium. It's decent. Speed of 26 is decent. Um, generally, speed of like 24, like anything that's like lower than 25, is a little annoying because it like push, pushes them way back in turn order, but 26 is fine. Uh, evasion of 49 is decent, kind of medium. Uh, jump of 3 is higher than normal. It's pretty good. Helps him climb extra height and descend extra height, so this is very useful on an archer, especially given his kit. Uh, movement of four is fine. Um, you can increase his movement with the movement bangle, but it's okay. It's not like it's not horrible uh, because he has some jump that kind of offsets his his lower movement. But he generally isn't going to be moving around a lot anyways. He's a lot like Archibald in that way. Uh, but he's just kind of like younger Archibald with different abilities. Okay, so let's look at his damage from his basic attack. So two twenty one at level fifty uh, without any strength increase. So it's decent. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. And then we have straight shot. So much more damage, 2 TP, deal physical damage to a single enemy. So this is like a basic spike. So you can like shoot an enemy in the back for a big crit or just, you know, set up follow-up attacks, start to open an enemy up. Usually does around like 30% of their health, like 20 to 30%. So it's a decent attack for 2 TP. And then we have steel trap. So steel trap, is actually really good um, with when used with choke points. So if you can control where the enemies are going to come in to a single tile, whether through positioning of allies or like setting tiles on fire or just map positioning, if you can force enemies to walk on steel traps, it it hurts them a little bit and it ends their turn. So if you have a boss coming your way and it steps on a steel trap, it ends its turn. So this just this ability, this this is why I said he shut down. So this is insanely good. When used correctly, and especially if used on high ground, it, it prevents enemies from pushing him because they step on a steel trap, take a little bit of chip damage, and then it just ends their turn, and then you can focus them down like with all your units next turn. Like So it's really good. It's a really good shutdown ability. It's really good for positional play. He can just set steel traps and then shoot things with his bow. So he has a pretty good like defensive kit, but he does good damage. Uh, using steel traps offensively can be tricky because a lot of times enemies will move randomly. So if you could, if you know for a fact they're going to move towards you, um, you can kind of like bait them. So one thing you can do is you can put like a steel trap down, and you can have a unit stand at, a, at like an enemy's max attack range. So they have to move forward to attack that that ally, and they will. And you can bait them into steel traps. But if there's another enemy or another ally they can hit, 
you have to make sure that they're going to hit the one you want them to. Uh, but you can bait enemies into steel traps. This is a thing. So you can use them offensively as well as defensively. It just requires a little bit of critical thinking. Um, and I'll, I'll show that in a match too. Um, Alright, fight or flight. Increase your movement by one when enemies are nearby. So range of one to two. So he doesn't have to be right next to an enemy. It can be a square away. But this is good for kiting. So it puts him at effectively five move. So if an enemy gets too close, you know, you have your steel traps to disable them. And then you have fight or flight. So even just Rudolph on a flank, like if he's just like attacking one or two enemies, and he can move to the enemy's max hit range, meaning the furthest it can move and hit simultaneously. And if you can set it up so that he moves away from them and puts a steel trap in between them and that enemy chases him, that enemy will get hit by the steel trap and he can keep doing this as long as he has two TP. So pretty good, pretty good ability actually. So, all right, throw of the hunt, increase your speed for one turn when you defeat an enemy. So this just gives you a speed boost, which could increase turn order. So it's just a decent passive. And then next we have Slumber Shot. This is another shutdown ability. Uh, against enemies of the same level, he will shut. He has a 60% chance to slumber them for two turns, just to put them to sleep. Uh, it does a little bit more damage than the basic attack. So you can see here, basic attack 221, Slumber Shot 265. So even if it doesn't put them to sleep, it still is better than a basic attack in terms of damage, so it's fine. It's it's really good. It's good shutdown when it hits. It can be it can like this and seal trap help contribute to shutdown, which is you know reducing enemy effectiveness or preventing them from taking action. So all right, and next we have those who wait. Increase your accuracy and luck on your next turn when you finish your current turn without moving. So he can still act, but he can't move for this to trigger. So accuracy will just make him have higher hit rates, so if he's having trouble with hit rates, you can just have him chill out on high ground and just shoot things the whole match to increase his accuracy. Increasing luck is good because it increases random crits against uh, enemies whose backs aren't facing you, so it's decent. It's it's basically like Huet's ability, but for free. Um, her uh, take aim, or whatever it is. Or, I'm sorry, focus. So it's very similar to that. Except it's free if, as long as you just wait. <laughs> so, but it does it on your next turn, so you have to like kind of plan ahead a little bit. But it's it's just something that'll just happen. You won't you you probably won't consciously play around this because it's not that big impact, but it's useful enough that as long as he's on high ground spamming, you'll just get more accurate shots with higher crit rates. And then we have staggering arrow. This is another crowd control. Uh, so, moving an enemy back and repositioning them, I I consider crowd control for a few reasons. One, you can push an enemy back and then move, creating more distance. So if it's a melee enemy and you create enough distance between you and them just by pushing them back, even on flat terrain, it shuts them down because then they can't hit you. So it also can reposition them into, like you can move them into a group of enemies and have a mage nuke them all. Um, you can push them off of a cliff. Nothing is more powerful than pushing an enemy from off of like off of high ground because if it's a melee unit it generally disables them because they can't attack for the next turn because they have to run all the way back up to get to you and by that time you can probably hit them with the staggering arrow again and just keep doing this to them until they're dead so you can also push them into other enemies for damage you can push them into a wall for extra damage they fall off you know they fall off a cliff they deal extra they take extra damage so in, in like circumstantially stagger arrow could deal more damage than straight shot depending on the fall uh, but it's another crowd control ability so he has three crowd controls he has turn ending steel traps he can have three out at a time he has 60 percent chance to put enemies to sleep for two turns slumber shot and then he has crowd control staggering arrow so he has he has damage and shutdown now he's not a damage carry uh, and by that i mean he's not like dealing huge aoe damage all the time and killing a bunch of things or huge single target but he's dealing like really really good damage but also contributing to shutdown so generally shutdown is better than damage because if you can put an enemy to sleep for two turns or knock it off a cliff or just continually disable enemies with steel traps that's preventing you from needing to heal uh, that's saving like your units that's letting your team be more aggressive because you're shutting enemies down as you're attacking so you don't have to worry as much about, about like how many enemies are going to pile onto a unit or something because if they're if they're forced to walk into a steel trap you can just assume that enemy is disabled for a turn if they're asleep they're disabled for two turns um 
Yeah, if they push them off a cliff, they're disabled for a turn or two if they're a melee unit. So like, so disabling things is good. And then finally we have Reign of Arrows. Uh, this ability is a basic AoE. Um, so this is, I would say he does, he's like higher than moderate damage. He's, he's not a damage carry, but he does respectable damage that impacts like, you know, an enemy group. Um, so like the, between the shutdown and like Reign of Arrows, he actually can contribute to AoE as well. So this ability is worth getting. It hits in a plus shape, you know, just like with most spells and it has an okay range. So it's kind of like, you know, like an AoE spell, but with arrows. Um, and the damage is good too. It's a little bit more than his base damage. So those are his abilities and his weapon skill. So let's go over his upgrades. Okay, so his upgrades, he's actually very cheap to upgrade. He only has two rank threes, which means that, like, for every extra rank three you have past, like, one, you, the, the resource costs increase, and the cost of the upgrade increases. So, like, on Saranoa, it cost me... Where is he? I just passed him, didn't I? There he is. It cost me 20 superior iron to get this, <laughs> to get this, like heal on kill thing so like you want fewer tier three upgrades if a unit like if a unit just has like one or two that's better um it's because like sometimes they're just so expensive to run so he's cheap to max out which is good uh for damage for all these three damage upgrades you want all of them uh there's no reason not to get them it increases your base damage plus your skill damage so that's what weapon potency means uh, and then for strength you want that to increase your damage for accuracy, you want that because he doesn't have the highest accuracy. He has medium accuracy, but every little bit helps. Uh, health, you can run this if you want. It's not essential. If you position him well, he shouldn't be getting hit often, but it helps to have. Uh, luck, this is one you can skip entirely if you don't want it. His luck is already low, so it's not going to really make or break his ability to score random crits. You'll just score a few more random crits, you know, on average, like over the course of like a few rounds, like a few games. So you can get this if you want, but I would say health is better. Health and damage are better. Speed plus one is definitely good. Definitely get that. And then Reign of Arrows is really good. So pretty much you want to get everything. And if you are, are low on resources, you can skip luck. And if you're even lower on resources, you can skip health. But definitely get the damage and like the strength and the damage and the accuracy and the speed. And then the rest is optional if you want to increase his tanking and his random crits. Okay. Let's open up a match. Okay, so let's do just like a really basic map with enemies kind of split apart. Well, let's see. I'll do this one just to show uh, like offensive steel trap use. So I'll show you exactly what I was talking about with like pulling the enemies. So you have to do, you have to like, um, let me place him in here. Let's get rid of Robo Boy. I'm on it. All right. So you have to check the turn order, and you also have to check the enemy's move to pull this off consistently. So, it is something you can do, though. So you don't, you, like, you can use steel traps outside of defensive situations, and they're actually good. Uh, these are mages, but you sh I still should be able to do this. Okay, so... Alright, so I'm gonna have Benedict aggro one of these, so let's check this guy. Let's check... So you can hit Y to turn on the turn order, so that that number is their order. So, all right, so he's going to go in turn six. So this dude can hit quite far away. He can hit all the way back here. So I'm going to move Benedict. Actually, Frederica is probably going to get hit. So, all right, so if he's going to attack Frederica, he probably will just move up to here and do that. Um, this is easier to do with melee units, so this is going to be annoying to do with a mage. But, yeah, that's actually a little annoying because... The, the mages have an absurd range, so like this is this is a bad example. Now, let me switch maps actually. Let me switch to a different mock battle. Mages mages kind of ruin that because they can they can target different things. But most of the enemies you'll be fighting are melee or like archers or something. Like, I would say most enemies are melee. So let's uh, cancel that. So because they're mages, I can't get, I can't place the trap and aggro correctly um, because he can't place it as far as a mage can hit. 
So, all right. Generally, you won't be hitting mages with traps, though, so that's kind of like... All right, let's just do... I guess this map. Let's just do this map. It's fine. I can show defensive and offensive use, and then just go over his abilities. All right. Let's make sure we're running him. We don't seem to be. Oh, no, we do. Okay, I see him now. He's in the corner there. All right. So he's basically a damage shutdown, if you want to think about him in terms of his role. My turn. Okay, we got Anna going here. So we'll, we'll just get this. I'll just in tandem him. Let's see if I can pull off this strategy. Okay, so let's check this guy's move. So he can hit this tile. So if I go here and just steel trap to this, it should work. Alright, so we'll just pass. So he should go to attack me because enemies love to attack things. He's the only target. But before he hits him, he, before he hits Rudolph, um, he's not going to. He's going to get steel trapped. I'll now him too, just for the hell of it. Just like go over some more of his abilities. Um, so you can see like his attack range. So unlike Archibald, like he does get the range, like plus one thing on his basic. So you can see here he has effectively five range. Um, yeah, and then if like, you look at these other abilities, this one's further as well. But Straight Shot has a lower range, and then Steel Trap has a range of 1 to 4, which is good because you can like put it in weird spots, or I could put one right here and stuff like that, so like you can put one right there. Um, then we have Staggering Arrow. So, so like with most crowd control attacks it hits like in a straight line from him so like you can't stagger arrow at like a diagonal or something because the game doesn't like diagonals <laughs> so you can stagger arrow a dude off of high ground or just push him back and then rain of arrows uh, he can't use right now but you can see the range of it and it actually hits a, a, an extra tile out because it's an aoe so all right so we'll just pass so give him some tp see passing see if we can get this thing to trigger it should. I guess I could use Battle Cry. We'll do this. We'll double items. Just give him some TP. Alright. Alright, here he goes. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. So he can he can bait enemies on flanks and just do that as much as he wants, as like assuming he has the TP for it. So this it's pretty good like he can just keep shutting things down and he's also good with your team because he can just keep putting traps to like defend flanks and defend weaker units so he can put he can basically just bait enemies <laughs> into getting trapped so pretty useful and it shuts them down it's really good against bosses it's probably one of the best abilities for dealing with enemy bosses because he can just continually like every time it's his turn he can just throw a trap down and if the boss if you know who the boss is going for, or if you have just one unit exposed to the boss, he can just keep going for the boss. Or the traps will just keep triggering and hitting the boss, so... Pretty useful. We'll just show... The AoE. And just kind of end it there. Because his, his kit's very straightforward. It's not like it's like hard to understand, or... You have to like really go out of your way to figure out how to run him or something. Just kill some of these. Pass there. Here I come. High ground is good. Okay, so here we go. So here's his AoE. So it can reach a little bit further. You can see there it gives it, like, because it's AoE, it can hit another tile out. And this is the shape it hits in. So that's pretty good. It's really useful to have that because if there's, like, a bunch of enemies balled up, he can just help chip them all down. And also Staggering Arrow. This will kill him, but you can see it pushed him back before it did that. 
and then he can like reposition. So he can he actually has some really good defensive tools for for like protecting himself and your team. He can push things back. He can interrupt them with uh, the steel trap, and he can put them to sleep. So he's really good at, at uh, contributing to shutdown. Um, he's probably like he's pretty versatile too. Like steel trap is honestly one of the best shutdown abilities in the game. Because it's it just always works, assuming something steps on it, and you can put three down at a time, which is very good. So if you if you feed him TP and keep like nowing him or something or fast acting uh, medication like from Medina on him, he can just spam traps. So like you can always have three traps out. And if you if you like have all of your units, for example, if everyone was up back here and the enemies had to go this way. To get up here he could just line up a trap here here and here and all melee enemies like one would get stuck on this one one would, another would get stuck on that like they'd have to wrap around assuming they can't climb this which is quite high Mo very few units could climb this so like your average melee enemies would have to wrap around so once you put him on high ground he gets quite broken and hilarious and if all your team is on like what like clustered together and enemies are forced to, to like wrap around something the trap gets really absurd, and he can shut down three enemy units, assuming he has three traps down. So like, and then once the traps are down and like enemies are approaching before they set them off, he can chip them and shut them down, put them to sleep, knock them off of high ground. Like he's quite good. So he's definitely a good unit. He's definitely worth running. Uh, he has shutdown and damage, which in a lot of cases having shutdown is better than having damage, but it depends on your team comp. So like, there's team comps where you just have a bunch of mages and just nuke everything, and that'd be totally viable so so yeah that's pretty much it for rudolph um yeah if you like these types of videos definitely like the video and subscribe i'm going to cover every single unit i'm over halfway done with covering all the units so i have guides for most of the units at this point um so all i have left are some of the weird unlocks like i have to get roland's sister i have to get travis i just got trish i have to play a bunch of matches with her on, on hard mode just to see like where she excels but she seems like she could be a damage carry with her act twice ability so we'll see how that works out i'll, I'll have to test it to confirm this but uh she might she has like a weird kit that, that, that's all about like stealing for some reason so and in, in a game where the farm exists it's not big value but we'll see how she works out but yeah that's it for this one definitely drop a comment uh, let, let me know what you think uh, if i missed anything or if i got something wrong definitely let me know um you know people get things wrong it's fine <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pin any corrections. Uh, that's what's what I've been doing. So if, you know, I got something wrong, I'll pin it. Uh, if you have, like, a different, like, any tactics you run on Rudolph, I'd like to hear them. Uh, how he fits into your team comp, how you use strategy, like, what strategies you use with him. Um, any tricks with, like, steel traps, stuff like that. So, yeah, thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next video.